Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we're gonna start with a little update of Nick Walker. I saw this post and I thought it was interesting, the way Nick looks right here. And uh, by the way, yeah, guys, I'm back. I was away for some time. I was on a vacation in Egypt, actually. I did not get to meet the big Ramy, unfortunately, but I had some fun. Anyways, I'm back now, so we're gonna get to this video. Nick Walker. So I saw this post. It was uh, him doing a front double bicep with another 212 competitor. And I don't know about you guys. What do you see here? But to me, it looks like Nick is off, at least on TRT. I don't I think he's completely off but it looks like he's not blasting right now because he does look a little bit uh, softer smoother not as full and as hard as he usually looks here is another photo that he posted and you can see right here especially in the glutes and the hamstring area and also the lower back he added some body fat which is rare for nick i mean he's not exactly pushing the food he doesn't have to he's already big enough he needs to make small changes detail kind of changes to certain body parts but like to grow overall he doesn't need to do that so he doesn't have to be in a crazy caloric surplus so he usually doesn't gain fat and i think the only way he can actually gain fat is by being off I don't know if you guys use gear and you know, but no, gear does not burn fat, but when you are on stuff, you can eat more junk food, you can just eat overall food and your body can utilize that food and you're gonna look harder, bigger, fuller, but when you are off and even though you're training super hard and I'm sure Nick is doing everything it takes, even then, if you're eating the same amount of food and if you are occasionally having a, a cheat meal, some junk food here and there, you're gonna start to look a little bit softer, which is exactly what is happening with Nick here. Nick was never known for having the tightest waistline, he always had a little bit blockier waist, but he would showcase his uh, prominent, his very strong abs in, in front of the bicep, in abs and thighs, he would crunch the abs and he would showcase uh, a lot of muscle in that area, and as you can see right here uh, next to this 212 guy who is doing a sort of a, not really a vacuum, but he sucked his stomach in, he stretched his torso and opened up his chest, his waistline looks even smaller like this and compared to Nick, you know, he's kind of exposing Nick's waist and here it looks really blocky but what throws me off uh, is the lack of a V-taper so as you can see Nick looks pretty flat here even though his waist is not the smallest he has a lot of muscle in his lats and his arms and shoulders that he actually can look pretty good in this, in this pose as you can see, this photo was taken about two months ago, and you can see a better V-taper. He's leaner, harder, fuller. Uh, I know the angle is a little bit different, but still, you can see the difference. So what does this really even mean? It doesn't really mean much, if anything. I mean, after the Mr. Olympia, he didn't really take time off. I don't think so. He looked really swelled up uh, after that Mr. Olympia. I think he kept... Uh, being on gear for a while then he took some time off then he was on again and i think now he's off again for some time for a little time and then he's gonna start blasting again because he won't be able to stop until the mr olympia so now is probably the perfect time to take another break to refresh his receptors and to simply rest up you know to rest his body a little his mind as well so he can be ready to push things to the limits for this year's Mr. Olympia and to showcase his absolute best, which might be even enough to win the damn title, to win the Mr. Olympia. What do you guys think? Is that a possibility for Nick? Oh yeah, I don't know about you guys, I don't know where you're from, but over here in Serbia it's starting to get a little bit hot. And this is a great refreshment. Uh, this is called Classic BCAA by the Old School Labs. It is basically just a BCAA with a great flavor of watermelon. So guys, if you want to try it out, if you want to support me and my channel, click on the link in the description of this video and use the code EVAN for a 12% discount and try this product out. It is really tasty, really refreshing, watermelon flavor. You can drink it while you're training, before you're training or throughout the day. So guys, go ahead and give it a try. Now let's move on to another uh, news and it's not really good news, it's bad news. Marcel D'Angeli's horse MD is probably not gonna be able to represent his absolute best package this year so as you can see <laughs> here he looked absolutely freaking insane for a classic guy are you kidding me how is this guy even able to make the weight it, it's really mind-boggling i mean to, to imagine that this guy can actually be uh, can, can actually fit the classic weight cap but he can 
he can actually. I don't know if he has hollow bones or something like that, but it's strange, I know, but he can make the weight cap. And he looks really classic too, he has pretty good lines. And uh, he asked us a question here. It is in Portuguese, I don't know how accurate this translation here is, but he asks us, uh, should he reach over 185 centimeters and weight 109 kilos on Thursday, or get down to 104 kilos anyway? So I'm not really sure what he's saying here, if you guys speak Portuguese, please explain, but if he's saying what I think he's saying, uh, that if he makes the height of 185 centimeters, and yes, bodybuilders do this, they climb on their fingers a little bit, they lift themselves up, when they are not bald, they grow their hair, and they put a ton of uh, hair gel, so when they take uh, their measurement, they're actually taller, so they can weigh... Uh, more, but at a height of 185, I don't think you can weigh 109 kilos. I think uh, he needs to weigh uh, below 105. I think 104 is the weight cap still. But none of that is gonna matter probably because he posted this on his story and uh, he messed up his stomach. It's either food poisoning or some stomach virus, but he has been vomiting and uh, he had diarrhea for a while and he ended up in a hospital. And as you can see right here, he says, I have diarrhea and vomiting from a virus or food poisoning for four days. Uh, there is a crisis in my region. I already lost about nine kilos and there are 10 days left from the competition. I believe that I will be able to, to improve soon and resume preparation to meet expectations. Now, this is, this is really bad. Uh, this is a nightmare, really, for a bodybuilder. When you're prepping and everything goes so well, and everybody's talking about you, and you look so good, and everything is going smoothly, and you get sick 10 days out, 10 freaking days. You can't really do much in those 10 days, and um, he has a ton of pressure right now because everybody is really excited about seeing him on stage and uh, i don't know we'll see what's gonna happen at least he won't have to suffer too much uh, to make the weight but uh, now with losing nine freaking kilos that's that's almost like 25 pounds guys uh he probably doesn't look very good at this point so if you guys are having a bad week you didn't train for a couple of days or whatever uh, just be grateful for what you already have when you get sick like this and you're not able to train or to eat that that's the worst that's not that's not good especially when you're prepping when you're so close to the show when you have all this hype like him i can't even imagine so you know i just hope he's going to recover as fast as possible i'm sure it's not gonna last too long maybe for like a couple of days more and he, he's gonna be back but um, there is 10 days left so he probably is gonna have to delay uh, his uh, competition he probably is gonna have to compete in another show not this one i don't think so but you know if he was competing for himself if, if he was an amateur if he didn't have such a big fan base he would probably just call it quits and compete next year or something like that but now with so many fans expecting from him uh, to, to compete he's probably gonna have to do a show maybe not the one that he was planning to but another show We'll see, we'll see, I don't know, I just want to see him at his best in classic physique, I don't know how bad it is gonna affect him really, when you lose this much weight for such a short time, it's probably not muscle, it's probably just water, muscle, glycogen, stuff like that, he's probably gonna bounce back as soon as he starts eating at least like 5-6 kilos, but can he be at his absolute best in 10 days? Probably not, but we'll see what his plans are, this is however very unfortunate. Oh yeah, we have another Egyptian that I didn't get to meet on my vacation either, unfortunately. But it looks like Hassan Mustafa is definitely at his most shredded ever. But he looks really flat. I don't think I ever saw him being this flat. It looks like he, he downsized a little bit. Um, but his waistline didn't get smaller. He, his stomach still looks probably the same size. But his upper body, it lost a lot of fullness for sure. But you never saw Hassan this detailed. Never ever. He was never this conditioned. And I'm guessing he's just flat don't don't lose hope guys he's just flat as soon as he carbs up he's gonna look much much bigger he's not gonna look at uh, this um, <laughs> it's really it's really stupid to say that he looks stringy but for his standards you know this guy is known as one of the biggest most massive freakiest bodybuilders of today so we are used to seeing him blasting full and here as you can see his chest his delts he lost, he lost a lot of fullness, yeah, it's just flatness, it's nothing else, 
it's nothing bad. I mean, he didn't lose muscle. Don't worry, guys. So as soon as he, he carves up, he fills up, he's going to look much better. From behind, you can't really see this. Uh, from behind, he looks so detailed, shredded. This is going to be by far, by far, not even comparable to his previous best conditioning. This is definitely going to be his absolute best. Look at the back. It's, it's really shredded. This is going to be one of the best conditionings on that stage. I, I honestly am a little bit worried uh, about this flatness because, you know, maybe, you know, sometimes bodybuilders, uh, they go to extremes and they deplete really hard. And when the time comes to carb up, you can't even carb up. Your body becomes such a machine that you need so much food that you can't even get down so much food. And even if you manage somehow, your stomach is going to be blown out. So I'm really hoping whoever is coaching him is going to have a little trial, like one or two weeks out. I'm not sure how much he has left to see how his body behaves when he's getting carved up. And also to refill his body a little bit ahead of time. And then uh, when the time comes to, to peak, they will know exactly when to start carving up and how, how heavy he needs to carve up. Or maybe just a regular carb up is not going to be enough. Maybe he needs to increase the food for the for the last couple of weeks because he lost so much so much fat. I'm sure this guy is a, is a is a furnace right now. Whatever you put in his body, he's burning it off. So you know it, it's a complicated body. I mean Hassan, you know, finally they figured it out. Finally he's bringing the conditioning. I just hope everything else is going to click and that he's going to be at his best because he does look like an absolute like an absolute freak. And with so much muscle, so much quality muscle, look at the look at the graininess, look at the back especially. He's a little bit narrow upstairs, but he has crazy details, so much muscle everywhere. He's not even showing his legs, but his legs are his freakiest body part. This is going to be a crazy Hassan Mustafa edition, and I can't wait to see it. I just hope he's going to peak properly. I was out of bodybuilding loop for a while, so I'm not sure if Derek Lansford is still a hot topic. I'm not sure, but I think he should be. Look at this freaking mess monster right here. And we got an answer about how much he weighs. Finally, we know the exact number. A lot of people were like, he's 240, 250, he's not that big. But on Honey Rambo's podcast, The Truth, we find out what is the truth. And that's not really it. Let's hear it out. What was your weight at the guest posing? The highest weight that I recorded in the morning fasted was 259. So there you go, guys. Derek Lansford is not 240, he's not 250, he's 259, and let's round it up at 260. I definitely encourage you to watch the whole podcast uh, at the Honey Rambots to Truth podcast. It's a good podcast, actually. Lately, they had a couple of very interesting episodes with Derek, with Nick Walker as well. So go ahead and check it out. But this is the answer to all of our questions. <laughs> Derek Lansford is actually 260. So now, can he make the weight? Can he make the 212? Can he lose 50 pounds on this conditioning? Absolutely not a chance. They basically confirmed it already that Derek is gonna do the open. It's not exactly official, they never really said it, but based on what we heard, it's most likely going to be the case. And um, I'm thinking now, at this point, he's gonna let him grow. Honey is gonna let Derek grow into the offseason. He doesn't have a lot more time, but uh, if they were holding back, actually, at this, at, until this point, then he can probably add another 10 pounds to be 270. And that's gonna be pretty close to Nick Walker. Nick Walker in this offseason is around 290 and uh, he's also very lean but I think Derek is leaner. I don't want to say Nick is fatter because Nick is also very lean in the offseason but I think Derek was a little bit sharper as you can see right here and also in the other photos but uh, again Derek has more room as they say he was holding back. So let's say Derek gets to 270. It seems like Derek is a little bit shorter as well. So, and also Nick is one of the biggest guys, and the size is not everything. Bodybuilding is an illusion, and Derek has much, much smaller ways than Nick. He also has a great vacuum, he has great symmetry, great shape, great proportions, and uh, now we know that he's not lacking size. He's not smaller than Nick, he's not any smaller. Especially with his superior uh, uh, genetics, you know, shape-wise. If Derek can bring his absolute best on that day, if he can actually come really conditioned and full, and if he peaks properly on that day, which I'm sure he can do with Honey Rambert being his coach, I think Derek can beat Nick. I think he's that good. 
Yeah, I'm aware of how much of a beast Nick Walker is and that he is in a conversation of winning the Mr. Olympia this year. But what part of that is Nick's confidence? Does he really have the shape, like Big Ramy, like Brandon Curry, like Heidi Japan, to actually be in those top spots? I don't know if he has the shape, I don't know if he has the structure, the genetics. Does Derek have that structure? He absolutely does. It's all about how shredded can he get and how well can he peak. But now we know he's not lacking size. He's, let's say, just as big as Nick. Yeah, he's not exactly there with the weight, but he has better structure and he's a little bit shorter. And he hasn't been pushing too much like Nick has been. And also he was a little bit more shredded at that weight. So, you know, he's close. He's getting there. And if he wants to do the open, he can do really, really well. Let's wait and see what happens. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more content like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.